integers and unsigned integers. If we want to use numbers in our Solidity contract, we can make use of integers and unsigned integers. These value types are whole numbers. First of all, we don't get to use decimal point numbers in Solidity yet, because it's not fully supported. So we have to make use of whole numbers. The difference between integer and unsigned integers is the fact that unsigned integers are only positive numbers, where integers can have negative numbers. Integers and unsigned integers, also known by their keys in Solidity as int and uint, comes in different sizes. For example, we can get uint8 going all the way up to uint256. And this is the same for integer as well although integers can go into the negative numbers. The size of these value types matter. For example, if we take a uint8 representing an unsigned 8-bit integer, we can see that the values that we can use ranges from 0 to 255, or 2 to the power 8 minus 1. The same goes for int8, which is representing a signed 8-bit integer. And the values that we can use with an int8 is between minus 128 to 127. We can visualize this, for example, if we take a number line and we know where 0 is, we can specify that a UN8 will be from 0 to 255. But then with an integer 8, we move it backwards into the minus numbers. And now we get to use minus 128 to 127. Now a uint8 or an int8 is very small in size, but that's okay because it has its own use case. The biggest one we get is uint256 or integer256. The uint256 or int256 is extremely big and the range of values can go from 0 all the way up to 2 to the power of 256 minus 1. So uint256 or int256 can be used for very large numbers. And of course, you can use the ranges in between as well, like int16, int32, and so forth. But to keep it simple, we are going to be using uint256. And fun fact, an alias is actually just uint or int. And in Solidity, this automatically means that we are using uint256 or int256 behind the scene. Let's go ahead and write some integers and unsigned integers. We'll start off by writing uint8, and we're going to call this uint8 our test uint8, maybe a again, and we're going to give this uint8 a value of 5. Okay, great. So now I'm going to copy this and simply change this into integer and also change my name accordingly. And now we have an integer 8 and an unsigned integer 8. Now, as we have seen that having 5 as a value for our uint8 is fine because it falls within the range of 2 to 255. But what if we wanted to make this 400? We can see that there's an error immediately, telling us that it's too large for this data type. All right, so if we wanted to use a larger data type, Let's change this instead of uint8 into uint256. Now it is fine. And maybe we should just change the name as well. Now it's fine. And we can use very, very, very large numbers as well. Now looking at the int8, we know that we can have a value that is in the minus. And we can go to minus 128. But if we go to minus 129, this will result in an error because we are out of the range. So to rectify this, we either have to stay in the range or we can also go into the plus. Remember, an int8 can go to plus 127 as well. But the same, if we go to 128, it is an error. Now, what will happen if we have a function that increments this number or this variable and we happen to go over the range? Well, in the new versions of Solidity, this is actually not possible. It will stop at the range and just result in an error saying that it cannot proceed by adding or incrementing this number. Later on in the series, I'm going to show you a way to implement something where if you do cross over the range, it will simply start from the lowest value again in the range. 
but it's always a good idea to make sure that the value type that you are using has the sufficient size of storage necessary for what you want to do in your contract. All right, so let's go ahead and duplicate this in here. And I'm simply going to remove the 256 because we know that the uint is alias for 256 and we don't need to express it explicitly. Now I'm going to change this variable to just be A and this one B. Then I'm simply going to change this value to 2 and for B, maybe 4. We will create a new uint and basically give the variable name as C, but this one I'm going to assign as A plus B. Now, what do you think C will be? Well, let's find out. Basically, we are adding these two. So if we go ahead and deploy this, and we need to make this public, so make this public, let's deploy, and if we now click on C, we should see that it is 6. Keep in mind it's not preferred to do big calculations when you declare variables, rather do it in a function. It's way more readable as well. However, I'm just going to show you a few extra examples. And over here we can see that we can do all the kind of arithmetic operations because we are dealing with numbers. So we also can subtract, multiply, divide, use modulo, or even use exponentiation. So now let's go ahead and test this out. Let's go and close this contract and deploy this new one. And we can see we are faced with an error. This didn't work. And this could be for two reasons. We either ran out of gas, which I highly doubt, or we simply cannot have a negative number in an unsigned integer. So this will simply not work. Instead, we can say B minus A. So now let's go ahead and try and deploy it. And there we go, it was successful. Let's expand this and now we can see what the values are of C, D, E, F, G and also H. And this is how simple it is to work with integers and unsigned integers. Just be aware that decimal point numbers don't exist. So F is 0 because A, which is 2 divided by 4, is 0.5 and it can't have a decimal, so it just puts it at zero. To get around this, developers usually work with bigger numbers, emulating kind of a decimal point system. For now, just know that different sizes of integers and unsigned integers exist, and you can use the appropriate ones for your use case. Integers can have negative numbers, and unsigned integers can't.